Tracy Williams again. I've been living in Darby Borough for about 16 years. I'm also an operator for SEPTA. I always seen the sign that says the uh, Darby Trolley Face, the vest that's on the side of the building, but I never knew what it was. So this year I decided to come so I can learn a little bit of history about Darby since I am a councilwoman and I'm also a resident. So this is why I am here. This is my Aunt Lisa. She is from Lansdowne, PA. She also comes to support and she also want to learn about the history of Darby Borough. So we are here to help in any way that we possibly can and thank you very much. <laughs> Can't you see the rider smiling? It's no mystery. I'm a burning on a trolley. That's the life for me. Darby Borough was part of Darby Township. When William Penn came, he said there was like Radnor Township, Philadelphia, and Darby Township. Uh, Upper Darby broke away in like the 1730s. Darby Borough incorporated in 1854, and Darby Township still remains in two non-contiguous sections. All the other towns in Delaware County broke away. Was they created Delaware County? There was some sort of legislation passed in the 1890s that every place had to be part of an incorporated borough. So, in order to um, keep control of their school systems, you have like these little poker stands borough. Uh, East Lansdowne is five blocks wide, seven blocks long. Colwyn is a half square mile. Glen Olden, Holcroft, you know, basically the Delaware County that we know and love today. But our contention has always been that our history doesn't stop at the municipal borders. Where we're going now is Eden Cemetery, which used to be the farm of John Bartram's grandfather. And now it's, it's Eden Cemetery on one side of Springfield Road and um, Woodburn, um, on, what, uh, the new county park. And there's also a magnificent mansion there was designed by Horace Trumbauer with possible citizens of Julian Abel, who was the first African-American graduate at the University of Pennsylvania. Trumbauer recognized his talent, sent him to France to learn Beaux-Arts architecture. He designed the Philadelphia Museum of Art, um, the Free Library of Philadelphia, and Duke University. And in a irony, or whatever you want to call it, um, he could not visit Duke University, but could not stay there because he was of color. You know, as I say, this has been 300 years of history and the struggle for human dignity. Where we're going, Eden Cemetery was created in 1902 and a number of people were brought there. It was like a receiving cemetery. One of the people who was brought there was Octavius Cato, who taught Greek and Latin at what became Cheney State University. Um, and um, raised a regiment during the Civil War. Started a baseball team with Jacob White called the, the Pythians, which was, which was about the, uh, the Pythians were named after the story of Damon and Pythias which is a story about friendship. The other thing that's sort of intriguing about Darby is, have you ever heard of the Minquis Indian Trail? The European nations were here to make money. What a surprise, okay? And what they wanted is beaver pelts so they could scrape, scrape off the fur and make it into felt to make fine beaver hats. There was a trading route between the Susquehannock and the Dutch and Swedish fur trading post down in the Schuylkill River called the Great Minquis Path. I think that they crossed Darby Creek at the rocks, which was later became the 12th Street Dam, went across Darby, across the rocks, next to the Bluebell, which um, was also a dam. They're looking to take that dam out. Uh, but it's, so basically, America's first highway passed through Darby. All aboard! All aboard! Anyway, welcome aboard the Darby Dinky for 2023 Trolley Fest, and thanks for coming. We're going up to Eden Cemetery, as you know, where there'll be a presentation today of historical nature and some more of Darby's big significance, national significance. 
up there at the old Bartram estate. Uh, John Bartram's family, when he and when he was a child, actually, before he moved to Bartram's garden. We have now entered Darby Trolley history. You can see the Darby Trolley Bridge that the Haguses and some of us saved several years ago with Darby's town of uh, borough help to uh, keep preserve that history and maybe a pedestrian bridge in the future. Um, but we were just on other Darby tracks that went up Chester Pike to uh, actually Wilmington via Chester. And on the McDade Pike, which we're about to cross, the trolley that came across that bridge right there we just passed actually went to um, just to Chester, but also down to Folsom and all, and actually went to Media. There was a branch to Media there, and it crossed the existing Sharon Hill trolley line, which unfortunately is also a bus today. And we're going up to the former Bartram Estate, which is now Eden Cemetery, and the formal former Scott Estate, known as Woodburn, Ron Springfield Road. Springfield Road was a meeting house road that went from the Darby Meeting House to Springfield Meeting House back when um, they were both very young. And it went from downtown Darby to Meeting House in a couple of ways, but certainly from the area of settlement into the interior, almost wilderness. And I'm actually from Springfield, which eventually became one of the last big towns, suburban towns, in trolleys in America. So this is Eden Cemetery. Um, the elite African American cemetery for the Philadelphia area historically. Now, um, it has it has the uh, some of the burial grounds from Philadelphia have been moved out here too. So of course there's the crypt where they bring uh, fresh caskets in, let's say, before they may turn them in the ground further up. But I can tell you that uh, when, and you can see the Octavius Cato marker right over here, when they didn't know where Cato was in the city of Philadelphia, we had to raise our, their, our hands and tell them, oh yeah, he's out in Darby. This cemetery is loaded with celebrities from Marion Anderson, to Octavius Cato, William Still, and others. 